Good evening and thank you for joining us. This is News 360 from my home here in Adesanwe. I am Issa Moni. And I am Portia Gabo. Coming up with the headlines. News 360 headlines is brought to you by... And tonight, legal practitioner and former chief executive officer of Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, Chachu Chikata, urges Ghana to look beyond oil and gas exploration after the success chopped in the maritime dispute. And also coming up, heads of private senior high schools fear collapse of their institutions as almost all Form 1 classrooms remain virtually empty. President Ekufado calls for intensification of efforts to end child marriage across the globe. Coming up in international news, Kenya's chief prosecutor directs Department of Criminal Investigations and Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate election board officials over possible offences in their invalidated August 8 presidential votes. We have these stories and more, including sports and entertainment, beginning shortly. Stay with us. In our very first story, legal practitioner and former chief executive officer of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, Chachu Chikata, says Ghana should look beyond oil and gas exploration and take advantage to maximize all available resources after the Sussex choked in the maritime dispute. Speaking on TV3's current affairs program agenda, he says the former attorney general's decision to bring all stakeholders on board the plan winning over Ivory Coast. The win on the disputed maritime border between Ivory Coast and Ghana has increased the country's expectations to maximize profit in the oil sector. Some experts have been speaking on the judgment trying to break it down to the understanding of the ordinary Ghanaian. During TV3's current affairs program agenda on Sunday, former Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, Chachu Shikata, says the judgment in favor of Ghana should go beyond oil and gas exploration. We should begin to pay more attention also to our fisheries and the potential of our fisheries. Just as we invite investors from all over the world to look at that potential uh, as far as oil and gas is concerned, I think maybe on the basis of this decision highlighting the, the, the fisheries uh, element uh, of, of the jurisdiction that we now have in this area, we should pay more attention to that. Governance expert Dr. Odor Sain called for a consensus approach in enforcing the judgment. And when they all come back to Ghana, there should be a joint meeting either in Ghana or in Cote d'Ivoire and then we can come up with a roadmap towards implementing the court's decisions. So I think, but we should go ahead and then run sensitization programs, awareness raising programs, explain things to people so that the laymen and women in the field can also understand. Energy expert Kwame Jantua argues the judgment should reflect every national agenda stressing issues in the country should be devoid of politics. And there's something about Ghana. When something like this happens, we don't build on it in other sectors in other areas. It happens and then we park it somewhere and then we go back to what we are used to. I think this is a good litmus test because three presidents were involved. Two attorney generals were involved. There were people who had worked in the past administration and in the present administration who were part and parcel of it. And President Ekufado has called for intensification of efforts to end child marriage across the globe, addressing participants at this year's Global Citizen Festival in Manhattan, New York. The president predicted that a female will one day become president of Ghana. The 2017 festival was aimed at encouraging world leaders to improve education, food security, health care, gender equality and sanitation worldwide. Addressing participants, Ekufado said he, together with war inequality on the continent to ensure that the girl child and women alike get equal treatment as their male counterpart. I am committed to putting in place policies and programs aimed at improving the development of the girl child in Ghana. 
equally committed to ensuring access to a minimum of senior high school education for the girl child in Ghana, a policy that has already begun to work. I'm also committed to mobilizing support towards ending child marriage in Ghana and in the whole of the African country. Together we can achieve gender equality, empower the women and girl, and achieve the global needs, goals of the sustainable development goals. And one day, we're going to have a female president. The Global Citizen Festival was first held in New York City on September 29, 2012. The Global Citizen Festival is part of a movement to end extreme poverty. are said to marry before According to a survey conducted by Action Aid Ghana, the trend seems to be declining. Well, they fear if the backward practice persists by the year 2020, the percentage will increase to 50%. The survey showed that each year, 15 million girls are married before they attain the age of 18. The Upper West Region recorded the highest. According to the survey, the girls are exposed to experiencing dangerous complications in pregnancy and childbirth and suffer domestic violence. Factors of poverty, gender equality, settling disputes and protecting family honor, tradition and culture are said to be encouraging child marriages. In May this year, a two-year national strategic plan to end child marriage by the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection was launched. As part of the campaign, Action Aid has also organized a deba for over 500 girls in Ashaiman to drum home the dangers of early marriage. Speakers at the function called for an immediate action to save the future of girls. The investment you make in the girl pays off in future if you allow the girl to stay in school, complete and do something on her own. Because the problems associated with child marriage or the effects of child marriage on the girl far outweighs the benefit you, you will get as a parent if she gets married. Rights come with responsibilities within the family, within the community for you. All have the choice to be responsible children, responsible youth, responsible fathers and mothers, and how we all need to contribute to make sure that you have the skills and the opportunities in life to achieve your dream. The campaign to eliminate early child marriage will be replicated in six other regions. Now almost all Form 1 classrooms in senior high schools across the country in private schools are virtually empty. Now, this is because the Computer School Selection and Placement Secretariat has not posted students to those schools. For fear of likely collapse of the schools, heads of the institutions are appealing to government to save the situation. 424,092 students qualified to be placed in the various senior high schools as well as technical, vocational and training schools and at the Ghana Education Service across the country. They constitute the first batch of students to benefit from the free senior high school policy introduced by government. While some public senior high schools are faced with the challenge of providing space for fresh students, private senior high schools are struggling to get students to occupy their classrooms. This is Insania Senior High School here at Kaswa in the central region. A year ago by now, over 150 fresh students were already on admission. But the same story cannot be told this year. Here, academic work for fresh students is expected to commence on September 25. However, as at Wednesday, September 20, only 18 students had successfully gone through admission. She was placed in a day school outside Accra. 
so I decided to bring her here. Dora Aquile's story is a reflection of cases happening across the country since the implementation of the free senior high school policy. It appears that as one avenue private senior high schools can also record some significant numbers in the admission of fresh students. By the next two years, if the system doesn't change, I'm sorry, this school has to shut its doors. Those who, do, who teach first years are eventually free. And the most unfortunate thing for us and for me as a headmaster is that every worker at Insania is a full-time worker. And you can't simply stand up and say, oh, I don't have students, I'm making you go. The free SHS policy is in line with the Sustainable Development Goal 4, Target 1, which states, by 2030, all boys and girls complete free, equitable and quality primary and secondary education, leading to relevant and effective learning outcomes. However, the policy seemed to have disadvantaged private senior high schools. At His Majesty Senior High School in Dansuman here in Accra, only 11 fresh students had been admitted. In the private school, it is the numbers that helps us to get infrastructure and then the environment that is conducive for teaching and learning. Around this time, we should be expecting close to 100 students, between 50, 60, 200 students. Okay. But currently, we are below 20 students. Samo Senior High School in Cape Coast and Hope College in Gomuafete in the central region, as well as Sunrise Senior High School and Williams Academy, both in the Volta region, have similar challenges. In 2005, the then Ministry of Education, Youth and Sports and the GES introduced the computerized schools selection and placement system as a way of replacing the manual way of selection and placement of students in senior high schools. But the system continued to be fraught with challenges leading to frustrations by parents, head of schools and candidates. I started this school going to Cape Coast, selecting cards after the public schools have chosen their students and gone. We, the private users, also go for the remnants cards and then we write to the students to come. It had its advantage, merits and demerits. So the new system that has come is not bad, but just that it should be all inclusive. Let's now go to the Volta region where heads of second cycle schools in the region have expressed fear the increase in the first year students could affect academic work since the number of students intake far outweighs existing facilities. But Lands and Natural Resources Minister John Peter Mewu has cautioned against any act that could defeat the purpose of the free senior high education goal. The school heads raised the concerns during a tour of some schools by the Lands and Natural Resources Minister. He went to the Mawuko and Ola Girls Senior High Schools, both in the whole municipality, Hohoi EP Senior High and St. Mary's Minor Seminary Senior High in the Hohoi municipality. Managers of the schools complained of lack of infrastructure, including classrooms and dormitories. The school heads indicated the number of students posted to the schools far outnumber what they requested for. St. Mary's Senior High School, for instance, had 467 students instead of 350. Hohoi EP Senior High had 780, 180 more than the expectation, whilst Ola Girls had 600 students instead of 400 new students. Headmaster of Hohoi EP Senior High, Dr. Sefas Edusei, welcomed the free senior high policy, but feared the current challenge could serve as a disincentive for desired results. We have about uh, 1,300 students before these 700 are coming to join. So currently, the population of the school is going to be 2,000 plus. You see, so our first priority is feeding the students. And then perhaps uh, solving one or two things, problems administratively, and then in their dormitories, and then around. Yes, so our first priority is feeding the students. Once the students are well fed, and then the teachers are teaching, and everything is going on smoothly, oh, why not? Ghana will succeed. Lands and Natural Resources Minister John Peter Mewu shared in the concerns of the teachers. That we wouldn't want. Uh, head of institutions uh, to send some wrong signals to government and other 
uh, potential partners that somebody may intend to sabotage this program. If you are listening, some headmasters were already asked to go home uh, because uh, they are going behind collecting uh, money. Some students urged government to sustain the policy. Still on education, some portions of the Apeja SDA primary school in the East Achim municipality is reported to have developed cracks. The situation could endanger the head, the lives of pupils. The Apeja Seventh Day Primary School was constructed at a cost of 139,516 cities to provide access to basic education for children in the East Achim district of the Eastern Region. The project was funded using Ghana's oil revenue and handed over in 2014. Three years on, portions of the facility have developed cracks which could endanger the lives of pupils. The Public Interest and Accountability Committee visited the school to monitor the oil-funded project. But school was not in session. We gathered the project was implemented without the involvement of local authorities, resulting in no supervision. It was evident the bad state of the school could result in a mishap. The access route to the school was in a poor state. We sought answers from the planning officer of the East Achim Municipal Assembly. The, the assembly didn't have any role to play because we were not involved. But even the location, as we have it, is bad. Had the assembly been consulted, probably we could have had a better location than this. Having seen it, I think we don't have to uh, sit unconcerned. Meanwhile, the East Achim Municipal Assembly intends to use communal labor to fix the road in the interim. The technical manager of the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, Mark Ajiman, noted lack of coordination in the award of the contract affected its quality. You come the beginning of the structure to deteriorate from the selection of the projects uh, to the contracting process to the implementation process. Each of these district assemblies should be involved so that they will be in the known. Meanwhile, the Apedra SDA Bakes School needs to source for additional funds to rehabilitate the school facility in the short term after its construction. Still in Apedra, lack of logistics and medical staff continue to deprive the community of efficient health care delivery. The community health centre has only four nurses as against the Ghana Health Services required minimum of 17 health workers. The Kronte Hene of the community, Nana Bafo in Chukukuko II, has called for an urgent intervention. The over 5,000 predominantly farming inhabitants of Apidra on the Insawam Kumasi Road depend on this health facility for their health care needs. However, the facility, which serves several other adjoining communities, is ill-equipped. The infrastructure is in a state of disrepair, lacks the required logistics and medicals. But of major concern is the number of medical personnel. The health center has only two superintendents and enrolled nurses each as its entire staff. No midwife, a pharmacist, nor other essential medical staff leaving the community vulnerable. The health situation is very terrible. The sick cannot even get medicine from the clinic here. Every health condition had to be referred elsewhere. We are pleading with the government to come to our aid. The situation at a medical outreach on Saturday. Our clinic is strategically located yet it lacks everything. It must be renovated and even, if possible, elevated to a hospital status in order to serve the purpose. The benevolence exercise was organized by the Mother Love Hospital in conjunction with the National Association of Retired Police Officers. We have doctors who are counseling people. We have a lab which is doing several lab tests like malaria, hypertension, diabetes and prostate tests. So after they have seen the doctors, they will be given medications. Those that are not available here, 
will be referred. So we have referral sheets that will refer people to higher facilities where they can be taken care of. Residents rushed to be screened. They were tested for all common diseases as well as breast cancer, hypertensive and HIV. And we sent the report to Municipal uh, Director of Health at Kibi. They will go through and see especially prevalent diseases uh, in the locality and they follow up. Beneficiaries were also educated on healthy lifestyles, drug abuse and other health conditions. Now let's talk about drug abuse. And head of addictive diseases unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Lugosu Amegashin, has strongly kicked against calls to decriminalize the use of cannabis. He accused politicians of pushing the agenda to gain some incentive from donor countries. Mental health problems, ranging from issues like depression and anxiety disorders to conditions like schizophrenia, affect millions of people around the world. According to current statistics, one in four people will experience some form of mental health problems during their lifetime, and many more will see friends or family members affected. At the Ghana Recovery Day, to create awareness on the presence of substance use disorders, also known as drug addiction in Ghana, head of Addictive Diseases Unit of the Kolibu Teaching Hospital, Logosu Amegashi, observed certain prescribed drugs are also being abused, just like cannabis. The original drugs that we were battling with was alcohol and marijuana weed. Then unfortunately, the prescription drugs have become an additional sort of drugs that is threatening the youth of this country. He called on political leaders to shed away personal interest and come to the aid of mental health prevention. We must be honest and we must not, by any motivation, be championing the cause of substance use disorders or the abuse of drugs in this country. If the, if the motivation is political, economic or anything, we must bear in mind that the added there may not be into the when we are traveling. The added may get distortion of after they're using the drugs and see us as animal we have and they come and kill us. Dr. Eugene Dodoy of the Ankafu Psychiatric Hospital said it has become necessary for the public to disabuse their minds from superstitions in relation to mental health issues and seek medical attention. I think it is unfair as a country that we kind of more or less punish people who are addicted or people who are depressed are sent to the prayer centers for them to believe in God as if once you say you believe then the depression goes away it's, it never happens like that some of the addicts shared their testimonies on how challenging it has been for them to get help it took me 17 years to finally get one year clean and sober and then, like i say it's only by the grace of a loving and caring god i've been through seven different uh, treatment centers i've been in jails uh i could have been dead a long time ago i'm on borrow time today you know but i love my life today i love this journey today i'm two weeks into recovery but Already I feel at home there. You know, most people go into uh, rehab and they get jittery and they remember the outside and, 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 and they want to escape and go out again and, you know, relapse. But here I am. I'm 69 years of age. I've been into addiction 30 years. And I already feel at home there. In other news, three-year-old Ellen Hamilia has been diagnosed with plastic anemia. Doctors say her condition prevents her from producing enough new blood cells, causing her to bleed continuously from every opening on her body. But they fear if she does not receive treatment at a cost of 19,500 cities within the next few days, she may lose her life. Plastic anemia leaves one feeling fatigued and with a high risk of infections and uncontrolled bleeding. In the case of Ellen, doctors say blood made in her bone marrow, which has three main components, that is the red blood cells that carries oxygen around the body, white blood cells which helps to fight infection, and the blood platelet which causes the blood to clot in case of bleeding has stopped working. 
Ellen's condition has led to low levels of her blood component, giving her repeated infections, fever and vomiting. Ellen has been bleeding from every opening of her body and this has resulted in the need for repeated blood transfusions. Ellen receives over five units of blood platelet concentrates every week. She is currently not receiving treatment as her parents have exhausted all their funds. Though the real cause of Ellen's illness is not known, doctors attribute her condition to serious infections. The doctors say if she does not receive treatment, Days, she will lose her. <laughs> Ellen needs 19,500 CDs to undergo surgery. Her parents are therefore pleading for support from the general public to undergo her surgery at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. You're watching News 360 and uh, still to come tonight. Academia and experts in the fishery sector criticized the selection of November as closed season in Ghana's waters. Coming up in international news, Kenya's chief prosecutor directs Department of Criminal Investigations and Anti-Corruption Commission to investigate election board officials over possible offenses in the invalidated August 8 presidential vote. Details coming up shortly. Let's continue with some more stories. An academy and experts in the fish fishery sector have criticized the selection of November as closed season in Ghana's waters. A retired lecturer and professor of zoology and with specialization in marriage in marine and aquaculture, Professor John Blay argues the approach to the choice of date defeats scientific principles and cannot achieve the desired results. The government of Ghana in October 2016 announced an annual one-month ban on all forms of marine fishing activities. The closed fishing season, which was fixed between November 1 and 30 each year, was in response to fast depletion of some significant marine fish species. But facilitators at a climate change adaptation and mitigation in coastal areas of Ghana training program at the University of Cape Coast disputed the date. If we want to revive the small pelagics, we have to study their biology, know when they breed, uh, the ecological conditions that facilitate their breeding so that we target the close season at that time. The Scientific and Technological Working Group of the Sustainable Fisheries Manager Program of the Department of Fisheries and Aquaculture at the Cape Coast University appealed to the sector minister to reconsider the close season. The fish then we will save the young ones that will be produced at that time. And then also the fish, uh, the fishmongers claim they do not get uh, value for money at that time. They will also save their resources and process the fish at a better time of the year. So I think August, based on the scientific evidence that we have, August should be the time that we close. The training was organized by the Center for Coastal Management, Department of Fisheries and Aquatic Sciences, University of Cape Coast for selected journalists towards enhancing effective reportage on climate change and coastal related issues. In other news, the acting chief executive officer of MTN Ghana, Ahmad Benamponsa, says the MTN Heroes of Change initiative is to encourage others to emulate individuals who are impacting society positively with the little resources they have. MTN Heroes of Change was developed to identify and recognize unsung heroes who are making a difference in their communities.
The first edition of MTN Heroes of Change was Ghana the 2017 edition, which is season four of Heroes of Change, has been launched in Accra. MTN Heroes of Change is an initiative to reward people who invested their energies, time and resources to make the lives of others better. Acting CEO of MTN Ghana, Ama Bene Amponsa, indicated the initiative is to inculcate the spirit of selflessness into Ghanaians. Identify, recognize and support the contribution of individual Ghanaian citizens and residents who are working to positively impact their communities in the areas of health, education and economic empowerment. The project was initiated to encourage all of us to be change makers in our communities and rise above our challenges to improve the well-being of members of our communities. We encourage all of you to identify people who community, whose community work fall within the areas of health, education and economic empowerment and nominate them as heroes of change. The nominee for recognition in education is required to engage in an educational project aimed at improving literacy and enabling members of the community to become agents of social change. While that for awareness creation and advocacy on economic empowerment, the nominee is required to be engaged in a project aimed at building the capacity of members of a community to assist them to become economically self-sufficient and enhance livelihoods. Hero of Change to be invested in the winning project. This year and in subsequent years, MTN Ghana Foundation will assist with the project implementation. Category winners will be awarded 30,000 Ghana cities each. Also for investment in their projects, while the rest of the six heroes also receive 10,000 towards their projects. The MTN Ghana Foundation will continue to give back to society to brighten lives through its activities as we celebrate our 10th anniversary in November 2017. And now the Chief Executive Officer of MTN Ghana, Ebenezer Chum Asante, and the Chief Executive Officer of UBA Ghana, Abiola Bewa, have been adjudged the Chartered Institute of Marketing Ghana Marketing Man and Woman of the Year 2016. The 28th edition of the CIMG Awards was under the theme Course Related Marketing, a Panacea for National Behavioral Change. The night saw individuals and organizations that have excelled in marketing performance awarded for their contribution to national development. Marketing Oriented Company of the Year Award went to MTN Ghana, while Star Assurance Company merged the Insurance Company of the Year. Bank of the Year went to EcoBank, while Asmera emerged Indigenous Catering Service Provider of the Year. TV Program of the Year went to Vodafone's Healthline. Guest speaker Kuhine Dasibri Kwamwe Japon, in a speech read on his behalf, called for a collaborative effort in tackling what he described as the many negative behaviors that have become the bane of the Ghanaian society, such as illegal mining. Our environment needs our unbridled attention. Our water bodies have been seriously disturbed. Our forests and farmlands have been turned upside down and are freely changing into arid and agriculturally unproductive lands. Unpatriotic citizens and foreigners see these positions as avenues to mine illegal gold and enrich themselves and their immediate athletes, all to the detriment of Mother Ghana. National President of the Chartered Institute of Marketing, Kojo Mata, urged marketers to bring their professional expertise to bear on issues that affect the environment. There are environmental problems with so much color, filth, child labor, illegal mining, which we popularly call galancy. These are just a few of the social and economic problems that we have in most cases brought on ourselves and could be solved through concerted and collective action. CEOs of MTN and UBA were decorated as Marketing Man and Woman of the Year 2016. CEO of UBA, Abiola Bewa, threw the challenge to women and called on them to always strive to reach the highest pinnacle of their dreams.
Congrats to all award winners and an award ceremony to honor African best performing economies and heroes has been launched in Accra. The African prestigious awards inspired to encourage countries to fully harness their natural resources for the benefit of their people. 15 African countries which are striving to grow their economies despite challenges confronting them will be recognized. Four living heroes from each of the 15 countries, including Ghana, would also be motivated and honored for their immense contribution towards the growth of their respective economies and development of their countries. There are so many people who are really doing a lot of work that are not known. We want to encourage the country to do more that we appreciate the little or the efforts they are putting in to develop its people. Sudanese ambassador to Ghana, Babikir El Sadiq Mohamed El Amin, wants the war to be directed towards improving education on the continent. First Secretary at the Embassy of the Federal Democratic Republic of Ethiopia, Akliku Tadasi, highlighted on some success stories his country has chalked and wants other African countries to emulate. As an African, when we learn from each other, as a continent we grow together. The event, which is slated for March next year, has 25 categories. And now, Ghana's inability to regain its status as number one cocoa producing country has been blamed on youth poor interest in cocoa farming. Despite this 28-year-old cocoa farmer, Jerry Kluche, a resident of New Edubiase, Piase in the Ashanti region believes Ghana can regain its position if the youth are attracted into cocoa production. Ghana lost the enviable world number one cocoa producer status to neighboring La Côte d'Ivoire. Though Ghana produced 1 million metric tons in 2011, production fell to an average of 850,000 tons annually due to factors including pest invasion and unfavorable weather. Government is, however, making efforts to change this. The cocoa farmer is key in winning back world leader in cocoa production status. The average age for a cocoa farmer is between 55 and 65 years. This, according to researchers, will continue to affect the production of cocoa if the youth are not enticed into the industry. A 28-year-old cocoa farmer, Jerry Kluche, a resident of New Edubiasi Triapiasi of the Adanse South District in the Asante region, believes Ghana can only regain the number one cocoa production status if government attracts the youth into cocoa production. Our forefathers didn't maintain the cocoa well, so it dies at the early age. But now that we have the knowledge, they have been training people all around, we should engage people uh, ourselves in it as youth so that we can also earn money from cocoa. If you can do it well and do it well, you get money more than those who are doing government work. Because every two weeks, you get at least, if you have about uh, three poles of cocoa, you can get about five or six bucks within two weeks. The chief cocoa farmer for Chapiase, Simon Yadope, admits Ghana can meet production target if right policies are put in place. First is lack of interest. And we, we the parents, like our youth to be going to the cities. But now that's we found, they will go there for two or five years and will come back and depend on who, still the parent. So we advise them to take our step. Over 100 pupils from selected basic schools in Kumasi were taken on a tour dubbed Coco Learning Experience to New Edubiasi Chiapiasi of the Adansi South District in the Ashanti region. The children were taken through the different processes of cocoa production. If you have a product and you don't want the product to finish, you need to do something. So the, what we, I want to do now is I don't want our cocoa to be, become a time that our cocoa is short, that we are not getting our sailing. So the youth, we need to inculcate them so when they grow, they can become cocoa farmers. Cocoa is considered as the backbone of Ghana's economy as the commodity remains the country's main agricultural export. Still in the Ashanti region, the Kumasi Metropolitan Assembly has interdicted two managers of Rattray Park for their roles in the non-functioning of a water fountain at the recreational facility. General Manager Kwame Asamoa Mensa and Head of IT Carlos Sechinto are said to have played a part in the loss of a key to the operating system of the dancing fountain. The KMA last month discovered water fountain at the Ratchery Park has stopped working. 
Metropolitan Chief Executive Osei Sibi Enchi instituted an inquiry into the non-functional fountain which served as a major attraction to patrons of the facility. Water fountains operations with manager and head of IT to resolve the problem. Meanwhile, the Assembly will be intensifying Operation Clean the City and Greening Project whilst developing three lorry terminals at areas including Sofa Line to ease vehicular congestion at the Central Business District. The Mayor also expressed concern at the Assembly's failure to generate enough revenue to drive development. You're watching News 360 and there will be news on sports when we return shortly.